And now for section 16.5, the curl and the divergence. So suppose that you have this vector valued function. It's in two dimensions. It's got an X component and a Y component. Then in the previous section, we covered Green's theorem, which says if you want to calculate the amount of work that that force is doing, you could do that using this P times DX Q DY, or you could change it to a double integral as long as you go take the derivative of Q with respect to X, the derivative of P with respect to Y, and then subtract. Then the next thing is, what if capital F was in three dimensions? So it has P for the X component, it has Q for the J component, and it has R for the Z component. Well, notice with this one, this is the Y component, and you take the derivative with respect to X. This is the X component, and you take the derivative with respect to Y. So when we have this one, we need, so this one is the X component. So we're going to have to take the derivative with respect to Y for that one, and also the derivative with respect to Z. And then for this one, which is the Y component, we'll have to take the derivative with respect to X, and then also the derivative with respect to Z. And this one, which is the Z component, we'll need to take the derivative with respect to X, and also the derivative with respect to Y. Okay, that's the first part. Then the definition of curl. So you then take the Rx minus the Qz, and that's going to give you the first component, and then take Pz minus Rx, and then that's going to give you the J component, and then Qx minus Py, and then that will give you the last component. That's the definition. The obvious question, is there an easier way to do that? Or do you have to do all of these things and remember which order and all the subscripts, etc.? Yes, there's an easier way. For that, I need another piece of paper. So it begins with, here's a definition. So this is called del, del, and it's a differential operator. In other words, you set it to work and it will take derivatives. Specifically, it creates this vector. So for the first part, take the derivative with respect to x. Then for the middle part, take the derivative with respect to y. And for the last part, take the derivative with respect to z. Let me show you an example. Example number one. So let's say that lowercase f, so it's not a vector valued function, but we're gonna create a vector valued function out of it. So this one is just going to be x squared, time, x squared times z plus y times e to the z. And then what is del of f? So it means create a vector out of it. And for the first part, you take the derivative with respect to x. So you take the whole thing, take the derivative with respect to x. So this right here, the derivative is going to be 2x, and the z will just stay there. That's the first part. The next part is look at the whole function and take the derivative with respect to y. So the derivative of this right here is going to be 1 times e to the z. And then for the last part, look at the whole function, take the derivative with respect to z. So this will be 1 times x squared. 
and the derivative of e to the z is e to the z and the y just stays there. So it took something that wasn't a vector and it made a vector valued function out of it. Then you can redefine the curl in a different way. So the curl of a vector valued function, take the del cross product with the capital F. Notice this is a capital F, so it's a vector valued function. So for example number two, here's a very boring, easy function. So this function, there's absolutely no curl to it. It's got nothing like x squared, which would make some kind of parabola or sine, which would go up and down. This is just straight, no curl. So watch what happens. So then find the curl of f. So it's going to be a cross product. So we need the little determinant in the i, j, and the k. And then this guy goes first, which means this is going to be the middle row. So the middle row is going to say, take the derivative with respect to x. Take the derivative with respect to y. And take the derivative with respect to z. And then you put this as the last row, whatever f is, which is just x, y, and z. So when you cover up the i part, then this diagonal would say take the derivative of z with respect to y. That would be 0. Minus take the derivative of y with respect to z. That would be 0. Then when you cover up the middle column, this will say take the derivative of z with respect to x. That would be 0. This diagonal would say take the derivative of x with respect to z. That would be 0. And then for the last one, when you cover up this column right here, it'll say take the derivative of y with respect to x, 0 and take the derivative of x with respect to y, 0. So its curl is the vector 0, 0, 0. Now let's try one that is a little more challenging than that. So for example number 3, let's say that capital F is equal to the natural log of xz, the natural log of xy, and the natural log of yz. And then find the curl. So it's going to be i, j, k across the top. And then the middle goes the del, so that is the derivative of something with respect to x, the derivative of something with respect to y, and the derivative of something with respect to z. And then the bottom row needs to be the f function, so the natural log of xz, the natural log of xy, and the natural log of yz. So when you cross out this column, this will say take the derivative with respect to y of this function right here. Um, I'll just move the pen a little bit. Take the derivative with respect to y of this function. So that means it would be 1 over yz because it's the derivative of natural log. And because we're taking the derivative with respect to y, take the derivative of the inside for the chain rule, and that would leave 1 times z. 
All right, that's this main diagonal. Then this diagonal would say, take the derivative with respect to z of this. And since this has no z in it, its derivative would be zero. So then put minus zero. All right, that part's done. Then move on to the next one. So it's gonna say, take the derivative with respect to x of this. And since this has no x's, the derivative is zero. Then minus, take the derivative with respect to z for this, which will be one over x times z, and then do the chain rule, take the derivative of the inside, which would be a one times x. Now there's actually two negatives involved here. Because we're doing the middle one, I'm supposed to put a negative. But then this was zero minus this, and then that negative and the original negative, they cancel each other out. And then moving on to this column, Take the derivative with respect to x, so that's going to be 1 over xy. And then when you take the derivative with respect to x for the chain rule, that's going to be 1 times y. And then last one was is, take the derivative with respect to y of this one, and it has no y, so its derivative is 0. And then the last thing is, these could be simplified, so that would be 1 over y. This would be 1 over z, and this would be 1 over y again. I feel like I should have gotten a 1 over x somewhere. Let me just double check real quick. No, that's y over z, and then the z's cancel. That is, okay, all right. All right, then on to the next part, a theorem. F is conservative. So you may remember that F is conservative means that it's the gradient of some other function. So it's conservative if and only if the curl equals zero. So is this one equal to the gradient of something? And the answer is no, because this did not equal zero. So this F is not conservative. Okay, then on to the next definition, divergence. Oops, that's supposed to be a P. So suppose that the capital F function is a vector valued function in three dimensions and its components are P, Q, and R or in other words, p times i, q times j, r times k. Then the divergence, which we just abbreviate with div, the divergence of f is equal to, take the derivative of the first one with respect to x, plus take the derivative of the middle one with respect to y, plus the derivative of the last one with respect to z. Or another way to look at it is the div divergence of f is the dot product. So remember dot product, you would multiply the first one with the first one, the second one with the second one, the third one with the third one, and you just do the dot product of the del operator with f. Because the del operator says take the derivative of this one with respect to x, this one with respect to y, this one with respect to z, then dot product means add them up. So for example, number four, let's say that capital F is equal to the first component is sine x, the middle one is negative cosine squared y, 
and then tangent x. So if you do this method, they're really the same and there's not a lot of, it's not like one is easier than the other, they're both basically the same. But if you do this one, it would mean take the del, which means take the derivative with respect to x, comma, take the derivative with respect to y, comma, take the derivative with respect to z, and then dot product that with our given function. Sine x, negative, cosine squared y, and tangent x. So when you do the dot product, it's this one times this one, which is gonna say take the derivative with respect to x of sine x. So that will be cosine x. Then take the derivative with respect to y, and that gets applied to the middle one. So we'd need to bring the two down and multiply. Then it would be cosine y. And then do the chain rule. The derivative of cosine is negative, which is gonna cancel that negative, is negative sine. And then for the last one, take the derivative with respect to z of this, which is zero. And that, I forgot to write down right here, is the divergence of f. Okay, now on to the vector form of Green's theorem. So you have some vector valued function in two dimensions, a P and a Q. And then you're supposed to find out how much work is done, which is that right there. And then Green's theorem says you could change that to a double integral as long as you take the derivative of Q with respect to X, the derivative of P with respect to Y, you subtract them and you integrate over the area. Okay, hold on to that for a second. Now find the curl of f. So once again, that's going to be the determinant. And then you put the differential operator in right here. And then you would put the function. Now the function only has an x and a y component. So then we would have to put p and q, and then this part is zero. So when you calculate this, it's going to be take the derivative with respect to x. Oh, hold on, I forgot to cover this up. Take the derivative with respect to y of zero. And then take the derivative of y, take the derivative with respect to y of zero, so that's zero. Take the derivative with respect to z. Well, this is a function that is in x and y's. There is no z, so that means that derivative would be zero. So then this would be zero for the first part. Now cover up the j, and it's gonna say take the derivative of zero, which is zero, Take the derivative with respect to z of this, and again, this only has x's and y's, so that's gonna be zero. And then for this one, take the derivative with respect So we have the derivative with respect to x of q, there we go, and then minus the derivative with respect to y of p. Now, if you look at what Green's theorem says, it's basically just this last part of it. So we just need the last or the k component. So in other words, the integral of FDR or the amount of work 
could also be looked at as the double integral and then you replace this part with this. So this is the curl of f, but we only need the last part of it. So you take the dot product with the k vector and the k vector meaning 0, 0, 1. So then it would just be 1 times this and so it gives you the same thing. And then over the area. And then there's one last idea of this section. So this is a theorem. Suppose that f is equal to this three-dimensional vector pqr. And suppose that all of the second derivatives are continuous. So you could find the der derivatives and even all the second derivatives and they would be continuous. Then the divergence of the curl of f is going to equal zero. So divergence basically means you go in and you take the derivative of each part. So another way to look at the divergence is that means take the derivative of, so you could use the del operator to do that, and then dot product so that it goes into each one and takes the derivative with respect to x, then with respect to y, then with respect to z, and then adds them all up. And then the curl is the del dot product cross product with the f. Well, if you remember from way long, long time ago, chapter 12, if you have a vector dot product with, so if you take two vectors and you find the cross product. So if you have vector a like this and you have vector b like this, and then you find the cross product, well then that vector is gonna be perpendicular. See how it's perpendicular? That vector is gonna be perpendicular to both the A and the B. And if it's perpendicular to A, that means the dot product with A equals zero. And so, that's not the letter A, but it's saying the same thing. And so this would be perpendicular to the F and the del. That means that it equals zero. And then one last example. I believe this is number five. So is there a function, capital G, so that the curl of G is equal to x, y, z, negative y squared z, and y, z squared, question. So somebody could look at this and go, oh yeah, there's a function g, and when you find the curl of it, it equals this. And then you're like, no way. Well, let's see if that's possible. According to this theorem, if you take the divergence of the curl, it's going to equal zero. So we're gonna use that. So we already have the curl, so we actually already have this part, we just need to find the divergence. So the divergence of the curl of g means take the derivative with respect to x, so that will just be yz. Go to this one and take the derivative with respect to y, so that's gonna be negative two yz. And take the derivative with respect to z, which is going to be plus two yz. And the answer is, this one and this one will cancel each other out, but it leaves yz behind, and we were supposed to get the answer zero. This does not equal zero, so the answer is no. It does not work. 
there is no such function.